Iran's foreign minister slams the detention and trial of an Iranian citizen in Sweden over alleged rights abuses. Hossein Amir Abdullahian, in a phone call with his Swedish counterpart Ann Lind, called Hamid Nouri's detention illegal and demanded his immediate release. Nouri was arrested in 2019 on charges leveled against him by the anti-Iran terror group, the MKO. Swedish prosecutors have requested a life term for Nouri over alleged human rights violations back in the 1980s. Hamid Nouri's family has told Press TV that he has been humiliated, beaten, and denied access to medical care during his time in detention and throughout his trial. MKO Group is responsible for a large number of deadly terror attacks against the Iranian people and officials over the last four decades. Joining us now from San Bernardino, California, is David Yagubian, professor of history at Cal State University, San Bernardino. Hello, David. Hope you're safe and doing well out there in sunny Southern California. Your thoughts on this trial and its ramifications, David? It's always great to be with you, Daniel, and greetings to everyone at Press TV. Um, this, Daniel, is just a classic show trial. And unfortunately, the uh, Swedish judicial system has been effectively weaponized by the United States and the UK to serve the interests of American and British imperialism. And I don't think that it's any coincidence, even though the cases are unrelated, um, that uh, within 10 days of the arrest of Hamid Nouri, uh, the Swedish government uh, announced the end of its bogus rape case against Julian Assange. It's work in the interests of American and British imperialism done in regards to Julian Assange. And then, of course, in the context of what was going on in late 2019, that is, uh, the maximum application of Trump administration, maximum pressure, and the Trump administration turning to all sorts of uh, illegal, underhanded, and cowardly dealings, such as within just a month and a half, then the, the cowardly assassination of General Soleimani and Abu Mahdi al muhandis in Baghdad. So uh, it, it's uh, a show trial. It, I mean, it's absurd. Uh, the just even the origins of this case having come directly uh, from the brain and office of the terrorist cult leader Maryam Rajavi in Tirana, serving the interests again of none other than the Mossad um, and the overall goals uh, of uh, British and American imperialism. And David, if you're part of the Iranian judiciary and you have to deal with terrorist attacks that have left over 17,000 Iranians dead, including a prime minister, including a president, among many other parliamentary figures. What are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to deal with a terrorist group on your soil? I believe that the way that nations deal with terror, terrorist groups on their soil is by uh, either rounding them up and executing them or rounding them up and giving them life senses and potential rehabilitation. What the Iranian government did in the 1980s um, in, in the wake of the eight-year Iran-Iraq war in which Iranians uh, faced uh, chemical we weapons provided to Saddam Hussein by the United States and its allies, uh, just the the idea that the Swedish government would step in now and uh, use this uh, concept of unis, uh, universal jurisdiction to uh, ostensibly uh, investigate war crimes when uh, obviously it would be leaving the very big fish um, out of its interests and investigation, uh, the war criminals of the United States, of Great Britain, of France, of, of Israel. Um, there's just simply no validity whatsoever to this trial. It's a sham. It's a classic show trial. And I believe that it was done purely in the interests of the Donald Trump conservatives uh, with their Zionist uh, buddy Benjamin Netanyahu to further uh, uh, place more maximum pressure on Iran in this period when when the Trump administration was bending over backwards to try to achieve some sort of foreign policy victory or victory over Iran uh, related to the JCPOA and maximum pressure. It was bogus then, it's bogus now. Again, I want to remind viewers that the wellspring of this case uh, was the terrorist cult leader, Maryam Rajavi, uh, being supported with, unfortunately, American tax dollars in Albania for the last decade as she has sought uh, any method that she can to try to uh, weaken or discredit the Islamic Republic of Iran. It's not going to work. It's a failing effort. But unfortunately, uh, 
uh, this, this sort of, of show trial, um, which having been initiated is uh, going to continue. And so I, I feel for Hamid Nouri and his family as, as the victims of this sort of uh, despicable attempt to weaponize the Swedish right. judicial system. And, and David, before I let you go, why Stockholm? Why is Sweden even giving an ear to the MKO to even ignite this, uh, to kick off this, initiate this trial, and or whoever else you, you actually alluded to maybe behind the curtains here? You know, it's a very good question, Daniel. And the Swedish government, for example, during the Iran-Iraq war played relatively a much uh, more neutral role than many other European governments. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, uh, its judicial system has been used uh, directly by the U.S. and the U.K. to achieve their underhanded goals. And uh, it, it, again, I don't think that it's any coincidence that just within 10 days of the arrest of Hamid Nouri, you have the Swedish announcing uh, the end of their uh, rape case against Julian Assange because, uh, well, you know, there, there wasn't much there. But uh, as we now uh, can, can hand off essentially Julian Assange, um, or at least uh, this case to the British and the UK, and of course, subsequently, he was, he was ripped from the uh, Ecuadorian embassy and remains under incarceration and torture uh, uh, within the UK. All right, bud, always a pleasure. Stay safe till we speak again from San Bernardino, California. David Yerubian, professor, they're joining us.